we're going to discuss our HCUI injector. That's a hydraulically actuated, electronically controlled unit injector. We're going to talk about it in pieces. We're going to talk about removing it and then checking to see how the oil control works first before we go further into it. As always, when you're working with injectors, before you decide it's time to pull it, solve the other problem. The system is sensitive to water contamination and poor fuel quality, so do that before you get into tearing the opening injectors. Now to remove it, we don't need any special tools to remove from the bore. We, we loosen the, the hold down bracket there with a, with a bolt. And notice this bolt. If the bolt is not tight, we're going to be leaking compressor and it's going to burn out our copper sealing washer. We're going to talk more about that later. But remember this, this injector is going to be mounted into the combustion chamber, which has high pressures. When tightening it back down and replacing it, make sure to properly torque the hole down. Let's talk about how this works. At the top, at one, we have our two coils. Then we have our spool valve that's going to control our oil flow. Then at three, we have a piston that's cut in half here that's going to push a plunger down. And at four, you see the red coloring. That's our fuel. The plunger is going to force that fuel out of that reservoir down around to six, which is going to open the injector and send it out five. Now, the fuel that gets into that reservoir comes in here at seven, which is coming in through the channels in our head. And that's one of the O-ring seals on those channels. Let's break it down. Here's our two coils. They are 48 volt 20 amp coils to control the spool valve. This is the spool valve. It's going to control the direction of oil flow in and out of the injector and control how long we apply it. Here are the different parts. There's our two coils at the top and here's our spool valve. As it's been removed, we've taken the bolt loose and taken it out of the chamber, which is our high pressure oil chamber. We've got a dime up there so you can get a relative size. So our two coils are going to be moving this back and forth. When we energize the first coil, it's going to move it to the left, which is going to let oil flow in. Oil coming in will force the plunger down. When it goes down, it's going to push on the piston, and which is going to force the injection. So we're going to bring the oil in. When it's sufficient, we're going to release it, bring the oil out, and return it back to normal. In cold weather, early models activated the injectors when the engine was off to clear any oil from and to prevent it from sticking. Now, there's been reprogramming update, which lets the fuel injection control module running current through the solenoids to heat them up in cold weather. It does this from time to time to keep them from getting particularly cold. Take time to look at the TSBs in the back of your reference book. They're there for a reason. They're there because frequently some of them have not been installed. And as always, when working on the injection system, we have to bleed any out of the fuel lines. To do that, we disconnect the crankshaft position sensor. That keeps it from starting, keeps it from firing the injectors. Then we're going to start and stop it. Crank it for a short time. That will give us a few seconds of fuel pump running time, then shut it down, start it again, builds the fuel pressure up, lets it run down. An alternative to this would be to turn on the fuel pump with your bi-directional and your scan tool and let it run for a few seconds. When you're done and you think you have the system well bled, reconnect your crankshaft position sensor so we can start and run the vehicle. Now, let's talk about the control pulse. Typically, this control pulse takes about 400 microseconds to open the injectors. Now, it might be longer at different times, but typically 400 is there. That's going to let oil flow in. Then we have another 400 pulse on the other coil that's going to close it and let the oil flow out of the injector, then we're going to turn it to the middle where it's turned off. The time between the opening and closing of the oil flow is the injector pulse width. We'll see more about that in a minute. It's going to range up to as much as 5.8 milliseconds for cold starts. Here's our oil seals. The first oil seal is between the upper chamber and the lower chamber. We have this seal right here that seals the oil in the high pressure. That's a very high pressure oil seal. If this is not properly reassembled and properly torqued, we could leak oil. Fuel, we're going to have leaking with our O-rings. We're going to talk more about that later. So this is the basis of controlling the oil pressure to move that piston, which moves the plunger to give us our injection.